For more on China's plan to tackle these important water issues, I sat down with Angel Xu. Uh, she's a research scientist and lecturer at the Yale School of Forestry and Environmental Studies. And I asked her why China needs to mobilize so much resources to try to find a solution to this. China faces challenges with respect to both water quality and quantity. So it's an issue of how much water they have available, which compared globally, China, even though they have the world's largest population, only has 7% of global freshwater resources. So this is an extremely serious issue. About 23 of 30 provinces are in moderate water stress. About six of them, including the capital of Beijing, is in extreme water stress. And so also to compound those factors, the quality of the water that they have available is also extremely poor. So for example, last year, the government reported that 60% of its groundwater resources were polluted. About half of all of China's rivers, lakes and rivers, reservoirs also do not meet water quality standards. And then within cities, so this issue of potable water that you mentioned, one fourth of all of urban drinking water does not meet standards. So it's a very serious problem that China is now facing. So you've got the fact that the waters are polluted because I'm guessing industries or pollution from nearby right. industries, they're dumping it into the water. Then you have the other flip side of it, which is to ensure, so if the rivers are polluted, forget about that idea, we have to figure out a plan B. So we're talking about plan B. And normally I'm not a big fan of the government doing these large scale projects, but in this case, only the government could do these type of large scale projects. How big of a challenge is this for the government? Well, you're absolutely right. Um, so for example, in China, about two thirds of water is being consumed by industry, agriculture, and construction. So the situation that China is in right now with respect to its water is a direct consequence of its unfettered growth over the last three decades, rapid urbanization and development. And so what they're trying to do now is to address one of the problems that China's water resources are distributed very unevenly. So Beijing, for example, has a population now of 22 million, but it's one of the most water stressed regions in the whole country. So most of the water resources are located, for example, in the southwestern region of China. And so what the government has done is to invest 81 billion US dollars in a south to north water diversion project to reallocate these resources. Um, but I think, Phil, that this is actually not a long-term solution to China's water challenges. Uh, most scientists and analysts are now saying that this very expensive, very costly south-to-north water diversion project is just a Band-Aid that's not really going to address ch China's long-term water needs. Well, so I, for I, example, I, I mean, you bring up a mm -hmm. good point. I mean, they're all Band-Aids yeah. because the problem yeah, is so right. big that no one company or, or even the government can just fix it in a, in a heartbeat, even if they spend $80 billion or $800 billion that wouldn't solve the problem. If companies are polluting the waters, it, it just seems like a hopeless situation. I mean, doesn't the government have to have basically stronger penalties so they stop polluting rivers first? I mean, it's to stop it at its source. That's exactly right. And so I agree with you. China needs to first tackle industries. They need to come up with better policies, incentives, and penalties to enforce existing water regulations to prevent pollution into China's very limited freshwater bodies. And so there is some hope. This year, China revised its environmental protection law for the first time since it was first created in the 70s. And so now we're finally seeing the government clamp down and impose harsher penalties on companies that repeatedly don't comply. So you're absolutely right that's a first step the um in in places like california for example you know people aren't allowed to even water the lawn anymore so I mean, there's a strong awareness about how to save water and, and i'm just curious is, is there a similar type of awareness there in china and would any of those awareness building activities to, to save water would that uh, ultimately help or is that just a, a very small fraction uh, of the solution well, the government conducted a survey last year of Chinese citizens, and 96% of them said that they thought that industrial water pollution and also water availability were very critical concerns and that they would be willing to work with the government on water saving measures. So I think the Chinese population in general is very aware of these problems, but you're absolutely correct in saying household water consumption only amounts to one third of total water resources consumed. And so the big culprits are primarily industry, construction, as we mentioned, and of course, agriculture. So unless the government tackles those sectors, which they have more control over, it's not gonna even be a drop in the bucket to solve the problem of China's water crisis. Maybe you, you can help us understand this part a little better. Um, when we think of water, we think of either, either I drink the water or I use the water, whether it's in the bathroom or, or taking a shower. And you don't really think about like, from a health perspective, right? Unless you're drinking the bad water, 
you don't really care. But maybe you should care because if the water is being used to, polluted water is used, being used to, to grow crops or farms and things of that nature, ultimately it, it does go back into your body and it does become a very um, serious mainstream health issue, doesn't it? Yeah, that's absolutely right. And the fact that one fourth of drinking water in Chinese cities does not meet standards. And even still, all Chinese people boil their water before they drink it to try to get rid of the bacteria, the protozoans, the um, bacteria that is laced in the water. And so, I mean, it, it is a huge challenge. And so what China does is they have different grades of water for different purposes, whether it's to water plants or used in agricultural irrigation for industrial use or for household use. And the problem is, is that in terms of all these standards, you still have a huge amount of water that's not meeting those regulations. And so it's a very serious issue and a major public health concern, absolutely.